Beach. My name is Joey Olberding, and I will be your host for all things sports. So on this Thursday, January 9th, 2020, I want to talk about the NFL. The NFL playoffs have been great so far, and honestly, I think that they've been one of the best in quite a while. I don't know the last time a playoffs has really intrigued me this much. I don't know if it's because of the fact that there's no reason for me to pay attention to the Bengals, so I may as well pay attention to somebody else or what. But all I know is that I really do like this playoffs a lot. I really think that from the bottom of my heart that the wild card round was some of the best, most entertaining football I've seen in a playoff format. That's not the Super Bowl. And uh, while there have been games such as the Texans beating the Bills, um, the only one that comes to my mind is the one where the Steelers beat the Bengals. So I don't really like to think about that one. But what a game that was, where the Texans beat the Bills 22-19 to in overtime. Now, let me tell you, the thing about this game is that nobody wanted to win it. And I'm serious. When you look at the box score, it may seem like, oh man, this was a hard-fought match to the bitter end. But let me tell you, it really wasn't. And I mean really. By the fourth quarter, remember, at this point the Bills had already jumped out to a 16-0 lead. And then they decided to say, "Uh, do we really want to win? Which apparently they didn't. So the Texans came storming back and actually... Uh, took the lead, took the lead for a while, 1916. But the Bills had a drive, and they were going downfield, and Josh Allen, a uh, young quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, was so scared, he did not know what he was doing. You could even see it on the broadcast. His eyes were dilating, and he just was very scared. And at one point, he was running along the field. that He had just gotten a big gain and tried to lateral it off for some ungodly reason, and it almost went horrible for the Buffalo Bills. But luckily, it was batted out. The Bills got to kick a field goal. They went to overtime, and nobody wanted to score, and then eventually the Texans won. And I really liked this game. Not because I would call it very good football. In fact, the Texans, they weren't doing very well by the end. Even though Deshaun Watson himself was doing well, it, it was really a game of defense, which there's nothing wrong with games of defense. Defense can be very entertaining, but especially the Bills. And this is coming from a guy who always felt sympathy for the Bills and kind of likes them uh, for being a Bengals fan. Uh, they were just not easy to watch. They were not easy to watch because you knew the second they, they got a 16 nothing lead and then let it slip away, you knew that there was no way the Buffalo Bills were going to win this football game. And that's just the luck of Bills fans and the luck of the Buffalo Bills in general. But that was a really fun game and one of my personal favorites, probably my personal favorite, uh, from the weekend of football. Now, uh, one of my other favorites, probably my second favorite, was the Titans beating the Patriots. Now, I find it a little disgusting there are a lot of disgusting things in this world. You got, well, a lot of things. Cockroaches, etc., etc. But one of the most disgusting things in my life is how much I associate the Super Bowl with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Now, they are legends. They are legends. That's a fact. But that doesn't mean that I want them to win. Not at all. And the Titans beating them Having Ryan Tannehill kind of have a redemption story, it was really nice. I was really happy for him. Uh, he certainly deserves it. Um, he never even really played that badly with the Dolphins. He didn't play well, but then again, neither did the Dolphins. So here we are. And benching Marcus Mariota for the Titans, I mean, it was obviously a good move. But something nobody's talking about is what the Titans are going to do, a quarterback after that, and I say just stick with Ryan Tannehill, because I think that the Titans are actually quite good, better than you might imagine. Their defense is one of the better defenses in the league, and their offense, one of the better offenses in the league. Some would say that that is a good combination, to which I would agree. Uh, anyways, the Titans did beat the Patriots in this game, and they did that 
or the way they did that was making Tom Brady realize that he was not as good at football as he once was. And sure, he's Tom Brady, so he still made it a good game. But by the end, Tom Brady threw a pick six at their own one yard line, and that is about what you expected. Just kidding, it isn't what you expected. You expected Tom Brady to throw a Hail Mary to Rob Gronkowski, who comes roaring in from the stands to give one last hurrah to the crowd. Uh, the crowd that, well, I don't know. There are Gronk fans out there. There are always Gronk fans, right? Gronk. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so... Rob Gronkowski should have come out of retirement, and then uh, the Patriots would have won, uh, but they didn't, and so they lost. So in other words, it's really not Tom Brady's fault, it's not Bill Belichick's fault, it's not anybody's fault, it's not the Patriots' fault, it is Rob Gronkowski's fault uh, that the Titans won. But the Titans, surprisingly good. I was talking about Ryan Tannehill earlier, but the real hero of the story is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry ran for so many yards, I just find it a little insane. Ryan Tannehill only threw for about 70 yards or so. Derrick Henry almost doubled it. Insane, and he got a rushing touchdown too, which, looking at the score, you can tell, turned to be pivotal in this game. But the Titans won, and they are on to face the Ravens, who had a bye. And I will say that that is going to be a good matchup, but I'm going to be talking about that in a minute. The Vikings beat the Saints in overtime, and I gotta say, I really feel for you Saints fans. You're a really good team. Drew Brees are really good. You're really good at football. You're one of the best players of football I've ever seen. Probably the best, even. But you already got your Super Bowl. But still, I feel bad for you, because it's like the third straight year it's been a crushing loss that really makes me sad, honestly. But the Vikings... Hey, speaking of crushing losses, they didn't have one. They didn't have one this time, even though they had Kirk Cousins as quarterback. And Kirk Cousins is not a bad quarterback. I would call him good, even. But the problem with Kirk Cousins is that he's bad in primetime games, like Andy Dalton bad. He is not his best in primetime, but he actually was really good against the New Orleans Saints. And... Uh, and I know that Vikings fans, they were coming into this game thinking that they were going to get killed. And honestly, I did too. But here we are. The Vikings won. I'm not sure if that momentum will carry. But hey, there's some momentum moving now. You know, it's starting to maybe it'll get into a bit of a jog, maybe go into a run come the end. But unfortunately for the Vikings, they have to win against, well, the 49ers so maybe they won't be able to do that but we'll talk about that later so I'm very sorry Saints fans this one wasn't as crushing but it was a bit like are you kidding when Dalvin Cook uh running back for the Vikings looked like he fumbled the ball and uh Saints fans thought that they might have one more shot at the game after Drew Brees fumbled for the first time all season um Unfortunately, the call was overturned because Dalvin Cook was down before he fumbled the ball, which was a 100% right call. It wasn't like the lack of a pass interference against the Rams. This one was a totally accurate call. And because of that, uh, the Vikings won the game eventually in overtime. Now, the fourth game of the weekend, of wildcard weekend, was the Seahawks and the Eagles. And this game was not very exciting. It was the least exciting. Um, just because the Eagles had basically no shot in the game. And what's interesting about that is that the final score was a one-possession game. But, I mean, come on. Carson Wentz got hurt. They had to bring in Josh McCown, who did very well. But it's not about the fact whether he did well or not. It's the fact that he had to perform at all. The Eagles are just unhappy. If you're an Eagles fan, you're just like, no, that's bad. I, I don't like that. Because if you're an Eagles fan, you don't like that. Everybody's injured. Everybody is injured. I believe their 
top three wide receivers are all hurt. We're all out for that game. And their quarterback was out. And a bunch of defensive players. I believe their their starting linebacker was out. Stuff like that. Just the Eagles had a very short end of the stick, uh, to put it simply. The Seahawks did very well, though. I will say, I am not very sure about if the Seahawks are as good as previous Seahawks teams, ones that have gone to the Super Bowl, but I do think in today's environment that they are very good because they do have that experience. And Pete Carroll always had that experience, but Russell Wilson didn't. But they also don't rely on experience. They have DK Metcalf, who's a really good rookie wide receiver, probably one of the best rookies this year. Though, of course, he was no, you know, Kyler Murray or whatever else. But he has shown to be very worthwhile. And he was on my fantasy team, so I know that for a fact. Uh, Anyways, so now that we've gone through those four, how about my predictions for the rest of the playoffs? Well, why not? So I already touched on it, but I think that the 49ers will beat the Vikings. And I think it'll be closer than some might think. I like the Vikings a lot. I honestly do. I think Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins has been a top 10 quarterback, maybe even top five quarterback over the past few weeks. So I think that they really do have a shot against the 49ers. The 49ers aren't hurting. Their defense is still really good. Uh, George Kittle is still really good on offense. Same with uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, of course, which is why overall I do have the 49ers winning, but I have it in overtime. And what's interesting about this is it reasonably should be a blowout where the 49ers absolutely kill the Vikings. They've had more time to prepare. Uh, The Vikings, they play uh, early again after playing late before. So the Vikings really get the short end of the stick on this one. But I think that, that the Vikings just have it in them. I feel like beating the Saints... The Saints in overtime, who, before the playoffs started, were my personal favorites to win the Super Bowl. You'll hear my favorite later in the broadcast. Um, I just really liked it. I like the fact that I feel like that momentum, the gears are really turning. And while I said, hmm, maybe for the Titans, uh, and I didn't even say that much for the Texans, I think that the Vikings have it in them. Uh, to lose to the 49ers in overtime. I have the final score being 24-21, but really, it could be lower than that, seeing as both of these teams have uh, pretty solid defenses, um, of course, especially the 49ers. Titans-Ravens. Now, before I was doing this broadcast, I was thinking... You know, the Ravens are going to kill the Titans. You know, there's no doubt about it. You can't go against Lamar Jackson. But then I was looking over my notes and I saw, uh, wait, Derrick Henry is really good at football. And I was looking at Ryan Tannehill and being like, wait, Ryan Tannehill is also really good at football. And I looked at the Titans defense and I saw, huh, that's all right. And... I began to think, could the Titans upset the Ravens? And coming into these playoffs, coming into the season before we knew Lamar Jackson was all that, I would have said no way. Of course, by that time, Marcus Mariota was still the quarterback, granted. And also, in general, they were just a not very proven team. Derrick Henry had kind of proven himself up to that point, but he was comparable to Melvin Gordon who did not have a good year this year. So I would have said no way. But come the playoffs, I think that those gears turning might say something also. Do I think they're going to lose to the Ravens in overtime? No. Do I even think that they're going to go to overtime? No. But the Ravens will lose. I think that the Titans are going to beat the Ravens, and that that is a take right there. That is a take. Uh, I want to say, though, that even still, the Ravens are going to have a great game. It's just so difficult to stop Lamar Jackson. I mean, it just is. But I think the way to do it is to stop him from running. Because at that point, 
Lamar Jackson, while still a very good quarterback, is just that instead of being an elite rusher as he is, he's forced to throw or hand it off to Mark Ingram, who's also pretty solid. And you would rather face a pretty solid team than than a quarterback who just runs everywhere and is absolutely insane. You you would hate to see that if you're the Titans. And meanwhile, the Ravens can't really have that same game plan for the Titans because of the fact that, okay, if you do everything to stop Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill has been a good enough quarterback to just throw the ball to whoever. I mean, seriously. The thing is, I think the Titans are a much more complete team. I think they have a better defense than the Ravens, though the Ravens is also pretty solid. They have not done a great job at stopping points from being scored, especially late in the game. But I will say that it's going to be a tight game, and I still have the Titans winning, but it's going to be a good one. So, as we were talking about earlier, Texans, they beat the Bills. And that game, nobody wanted to win. Nobody wanted to win that football game. So when the Texans go against a team that's good, very good, like, let's say, the Kansas City Chiefs, I don't expect it to go very well for them. The Chiefs are such a complete team. They are just such a complete team. They are so solid. They have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. I basically don't need to say anything else. They are so good. They are so good. And the beautiful thing is, they got rid of Kareem Hunt, as you should, and they brought in Shady McCoy. Maybe not. Both have had their issues, but he's done so well. He's replaced them really perfectly in many respects. And I think that is absolutely phenomenal. The Kansas City Chiefs have turned into a real contender. And I'm not just saying that because they have Patrick Mahomes, though he's been so, so good. I just... The the combination of Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and all of their buds is just such a beautiful thing. They will kill the Texans. They will destroy them. It'll be the biggest blowout at the playoffs. It'll be, in my opinion, maybe possibly around a 37 to 10 game and I can't wait for the Texans to somehow beat the Chiefs and then win the Super Bowl and when I say I can't wait I mean I really don't want that to happen now the final game of the divisional is the Seahawks and the Packers and this is an interesting game because the Packers honestly have one of the better offenses that they've had in quite a few years under Aaron Rodgers Uh, But I do think that the Seahawks have a better defense, and they also have quite the good offense. Russell Wilson was the second-best quarterback in football this year behind uh, Jamar Laxon or whatever his name is, and uh, it shows. There's a reason why the Seahawks made it this far in the playoffs already. Sure, the Eagles were all dinged up, but the Eagles were still very good in many respects. Even though they did not have a good record, they did still have a pretty solid team. And it's really a shock that it was a one-possession game uh, in the end that the Seahawks could barely squeeze out a win against the Eagles. But against the Packers, the Packers have probably been preparing to face the Seahawks this entire time. I mean, really, they almost certainly have and Aaron Rodgers he's quite good at playoff games but I will say that Russell Wilson is too and I have a lot of faith in Pete Carroll uh, to be able to make the right call this time unlike the Super Bowl a few years ago Uh, I think that it'll be a close game no matter what I really do I see the Seahawks and I see the Packers and I see a lot of defense now these two teams aren't really known for their defense especially not the Packers but I don't think that the Seahawks have that great of an offense and I don't think the Packers have an incredible offense so whatever it is this game's going to be close but I don't think it'll go to overtime I think it'll be a game with maybe one or two touchdowns across the entire time and it'll have a lot of field goals so That is why my final score for this game 
is 13-10 Seahawks. Two touchdowns across the whole thing and pivotal field goals down the stretch. Now, why do I think, even though I've basically said that the Packers this entire time are the better team, why would I go for the Seahawks? Well, the answer is quite simple. Kicking. Special teams. The Seahawks have a solid special teams unit. The Packers, they have an okay one. And in the end, people be missing field goals. A lot of people have missed field goals already in these playoffs. The Texans have, the Saints have, which was very pivotal for that game, and others have as well. So, it'll come down to one field goal, maybe to tie the game to send it into overtime, and I think that Mason Crosby will miss the field goal, and the Seahawks will win. So, the big game, Titans-Chiefs. AFC Conference Finals. That's a weird sentence to say, but it's the one I'm going with. I think that the Chiefs will win, and I think that they will do pretty well. I think that the final score will be 24 15 because the Titans will go for an extra point and make it. I think that the Chiefs just are a better team all around. They don't have the same rushing power as Derrick Henry has, but they do have a way better passer in Patrick Mahomes. And I think that they just have better weapons to go to. I think that the Chiefs are also more complete. The thing is, the Titans are very inexperienced, even against a team like the Chiefs who are being led by a sort of second-year player in Patrick Mahomes. Andy Reid is a lot more experienced as a coach in the playoffs. And the Titans... They've gone to the playoffs with Marcus Mariota once, I believe, but that was different. They have Ryan Tannehill now, and now they have to come across a whole bunch of new plays, and they have to think of all new strategies against the best teams in the league, and I didn't expect the Tennessee Titans to win a gauntlet against the best teams in the league, and I can see the Chiefs doing exactly that. 24-15 is my score. And honestly, it could be higher than that. Patrick Mahomes is such a good quarterback that basically the Chiefs are going to get 20 points no matter what. And I'm this is basically a good day for the Titans in this scenario. It's like their defense had a pretty good day. But reasonably, the Chiefs could get even 45 points against the Titans if they really did well enough. If they really really just beat up on the Texans sent if they really really just beat up on the Titans secondary they could totally do it all right NFC conference finals 49ers Seahawks somehow the Seahawks have made it to the NFC conference finals and okay I think the 49ers will win Cool. It's like that. Things happen. The Seahawks were surprised to get it this far, just like how the Titans were surprised to get it that far. But even the Seahawks weren't as much of a surprise. Like, you could see a rematch between the 49ers and the Seahawks. And I think that the Seahawks will not have a very good game against the 49ers because the 49ers, they're basically better than the Seahawks in almost every way, except maybe a quarterback. Uh, They just have better weapons. DK Metcalf is pretty good, but he is not going to catch balls quite quite like George Kittle, who's a tight end. And that's really interesting because it's my two teams for the Super Bowl, their main wide receivers are both probably tight ends. And I think that that is just insane. It really shows how football's really evolved. If your main receiver can also be an exceptional blocker, then that really sort of almost revolutionizes the game. Well, you have a great quarterback, and you have a great defense. Both of these teams have quite good defenses, especially the 49ers. What I'm saying is it turns into a great Super Bowl matchup. So Chiefs 49ers... Who do I think is going to win? 
Now, before I get into that, I want to just give you a personal gripe of mine. The Chiefs, their colors are not good. And for a long time in my life, I didn't like the Chiefs because I didn't like their uniforms. Now, the 49ers, I always thought that they had pretty all right uniforms. Now, you may say, all right, so he's biased, so he's going to pick the 49ers. That's where you're wrong. I think that the Chiefs will win, and I think that they'll win in a pretty close game. I think it'll be 21-17 in another pretty big defensive game. Though, I could reasonably see the score bump up 10 to like 31-27. It's hard to tell because you don't know which version of Patrick Mahomes you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get the really good version or the really, really good version. Uh, but I'm going to say we're going to get just the really good version, but I think it's good enough to get past the 49ers. I feel like the Chiefs, they really do have it all. And the one thing that the 49ers don't have is experience, and that's where the Chiefs have the advantage. I think it'll be a great game. It'll come down to the end. Maybe even it'll go to overtime. But I think for now, it's fine just expecting it to be a normal game of football but the ending i think will be good i think that there's a chance that patrick mahomes gets some sort of walk off maybe not exactly maybe there's still like three minutes left on the clock but something really good something that the 49ers can't really get back from they do bad on the drive that they get back try the onside kick fail and we have the Kansas City Chiefs as our new Super Bowl champs. Just a long, long line of uh, Mahomes uh, Super Bowl MVPs down the road after that. Uh, that's my expectation for the 2020 NFL playoffs. And with that, I think that'll do it for this week's edition of the Payoff Pitch. If you enjoyed, make sure to check us out on YouTube. Search us up in the little search bar, the Payoff Pitch. Uh, Joey over the hand usually helps it out a little. And uh, check us out on TuneIn Radio 95.7 MRC. And from me, Joey Olberden, I hope that you stay tuned to 95.7 MRC for more payoff pitch and so much more.